I'm really excited to be here in the Logistics Center. We're just about a half a mile down the street from the main plant, and I've got Timmy Maccabee here. And tell me what you do for Freightliner Custom Chassis, Timmy. I am a materials system tech, so. That sounds pretty fancy, what is that? <laughs> it is actually just a job where I monitor material systems and any system that pertains to getting parts from here to our main plant. Okay, great. And how long have you been with the company? I've been here almost 23 years. Wow, 23 years. That's impressive. Yes. So, so tell me what you're going to show me this morning. So today, um, we're going to take a walk through our, basically the logistics center process. We'll show parts coming through the door. It'll go into the warehouse and it makes a big horseshoe. We'll go through our kitting area and out the door to the main plant. Okay. We like to call it controlled chaos, and that's that's what it looks like from the outside eyes looking in. So we're actually standing inside our receiving department where that chaos actually starts. So the dock doors that are behind you and behind these parts is where trucks will back up, we'll unload the freight. So this is basically the epitome of just-in-time inventory. Absolutely. So what comes off the truck today, you hope to have the plant by within 24 hours? Yes, ma'am. Wow, that's impressive. So Timmy, I hear that you have a zero waste to landfill program, which I'm pretty impressed with. Can you give me a little bit more information on that? Because I see, I see a lot of cardboard here. What's gonna happen with that? The cardboard and the plastic here, none of it will go to a local landfill. That was part of our initiative drive that we started uh, probably seven or eight years ago. And I'm proud to say that we were the first DTNA facility to actually meet the zero waste. So these machines enabled us to take people off of high rise lifts and start storing these containers. There's 15,000 containers of the small lot stored at any given time. So does each one of these containers have its own little special home up there? No, it does not. The system's actually smart enough to try to make itself more efficient. So it's continuously shuffling these totes. For example, we have this one here. If I already have some at the front of the machine, what I put in, it may store it at the back. Once those from the front are gone, it will shuffle the back to the front just so we can make our deliveries a little bit faster. Very cool. So I'm amazed at the sheer number of parts that I've seen and how you keep it all orderly and in the right place. So I know that these they've been packed yep. and now they're heading up to their little storage spot until you need them for the chassis, right? They are. So the parts behind us you see are actually being stored into our warehouse at a very efficient rate. So these guys are able to just to throw totes up there just as, as fast as you so can put them up there. So efficient, they're accurate. Yep. And then what does that lead? It, it makes it so that Freightliner Custom Chassis can do more volume. We can do more volume at a- More much, volume for less. <laughs> much less price, absolutely. <laughs> Which is amazing, because when you look at this place, I know it's super expensive, but obviously it pays for itself in making them efficient and accurate and providing that ability to do more volume. Yes. You mentioned pick by light. Is that what's happening here? It is. We're now standing in our kit area. So you see the guy behind us, he's actually picking parts and hitting red buttons. So the lights actually indicate what parts he needs to pick and the quantity. Once he hits those lights, his cart will actually light up and show him where to put those parts. So Angie, we're surrounded by kits now. All kinds of kits, right? Over 500 per day usually leave our facility and we deliver them directly to the lines. So. Looking at right here, this is actually one of our engine trim kits. I know we didn't get to go to that area, but you're gonna see a lot of those later on. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And, and there's a lot of different parts on all of these kits. So these parts are specific parts that our customers have requested. Our big word in our name is custom. custom. So each one's gonna be different and we have to make sure that we put the exact match for every customer on each kit. So we built the kit, now what's gonna happen? We have built the kit. Not only have we built the kit. I we, mean, I built the kit. You built the kit. <laughs> we have walked all the way through the entire robust process that we have here at the Logistics Center. And now it's time for these parts to get shipped to the plant. I'm here with Rodney Wolf. And Rodney, will you tell me what you do for Freightliner Custom Chassis? Uh, I'm a CI facilitator. I work in the, uh, the Office of Continuous Improvement. Uh, the office, we do projects in the plant uh, ensure we stay efficient, new product introduction, uh, making sure the line runs smooth. And how like many that. years have you been doing this for Freightliner Custom Chassis? I have been with Freightliner Custom Chassis for 24 years. Wow. <laughs> I, I've been in the CI office for 12 years. Give me an overview of what we're gonna go and see. When you get out in the plant, the plant has three production lines on it. Line one is the school bus, school bus line that produces all the school bus chassis. 
uh, line two, the RV line. That's our that, line. That's it. <laughs> and that's of all different uh, all different specs models. Specs on those yes. RVs yes. too. So it's yeah. not just the same one going through. Oh no, no, it's not. There's nothing. There's nothing cookie cutter about line two. And then line three is the uh, the box van line, which is if you have a if you have a UPS truck come to your house, the ch chances are chassis. If Amazon delivers. Amazon <laughs> delivers. You're you're probably right. If it's if it's in a, in a new box van, it's probably on our chassis. All right. Well, let's go take a look. Let's do. So there's a lot going on here, Rodney. Tell me what's happening behind us. Uh, right behind me is the beginning of engine trim. Uh, we have one engine line that processes engines for the whole plant. The engines come in, uh, they're, they're taken out by serial number. Uh, they're set up on the table. So this is your favorite part? Uh, this is my favorite part because, number one, because of the process of all the cool tools. But the neat thing is the kit cart that comes with the engine. Uh, the kit cart is packed down the street at the logistics center. And what it allows the assembler to do is allow the assembler to focus on their work. So when the, the engine comes, the, the cart comes. Everything with it. comes, the parts are all they, there. They there's no guesswork. Work. There's no guesswork because it's it's such an accurate system. When they pick the parts, they send them down here. The assembler doesn't have to, to guess, they don't have to look. Uh, uh, they get their parts, they assemble them, and, and it moves on. So where are we going to go and see next? Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to we'll work our way through the plant, and uh, we'll wind up over on the RV line and start down the RV line. Okay. So you talked about squaring up the chassis. I know that's something that only Freightliner does with the squaring uh, fixture. We call it table two, the squaring fixture. The chassis comes off of uh, off table one. It goes on to table two. There there are alignment. There are holes in the rail that are punched there specifically for this, this model. For that um, model and for that customer, for right? That customer. So it's not just like a you have a box chassis. No, uh -huh. So each specific customer or model that they're building for, you've got those holes. Right. Oh, here it goes. Oh, that one's flying out. Yeah, so you can see yep. it's it's upside um, down. You mentioned that it's upside down. Why upside down? Upside down. It's easier, it's easier to put on suspension components. Uh, Wiring harness, airlines, uh, uh, some of the, the radiator components go There's in. There's the airbags. Yep, airbags up there. You can see those. You can see the air dryer. Part of the uh, the uh, transmission cooling package is already in. Uh, it's already and everything's already. When it gets on the squaring fixture, uh, they put the pins in it. It locks it into place, and they use the uh, the smart tools uh, to torque the hardware down. So again. It's, it's torqued down using a smart tool. It's recorded to that chassis, so they know if there had been any problems. The thing is, if there's any problems, they if they the find tool. a problem right now, they fix it right now. Rodney, where are we now? Uh, we're at axle install on line two. And this is where they install the axle from above. Remember the chassis is upside right, down. Right, right. They install it from above. The reason they install it from above is, number one, it's easier. So if it's easier, it's going to be you're going to be able to get a better fitting. It's, better. It fits, it's easier to fit if you're trying to push something in from the bottom. This comes down from the top. We use gravity, let it pull it into place. Uh, it's easier on the assembler. It's easier to get torque tools in. Right. Can you only imagine trying to put a torque tool in from the bottom? Here, they, you're up top. You put the tools in from the top. It's easier to use. Easy, you need to maneuver it into place. It's just a whole lot easier. I'm sort of excited because I get to see him roll a chassis, right? Yep, right here. We're at rollover right now. And what happens is chassis moves up into, into station. Once it moves up into station, uh, the assembler has a set of straps they put around it. Uh, they, they pick it up. When they pick it up, they roll it over. Once it's rolled over, uh, they move it forward just a little bit. They, uh, they take the fixtures off and turn it into axle carts. Uh, they set it back down, and once it's set back down, then it progresses on down the line. So here at the fluid fill, tell me what happens. All right, the, the chassis has progressed down. It's got all the stuff on it. It gets into this station, and what will happen next, when it gets into position, they'll go and they'll, they'll connect all the, the necessary things up to it. Uh, it, gets, uh, it gets transmission fluid. It gets hydraulic fluid for the power steering. It gets antifreeze. But the neat thing about this, just like a smart tool, except this is a smart system. When it comes up, the assembler scans the chassis. It has a barcode on okay. it. And that barcode tells the machine what kind of fluid it needs. You put the connectors on it. Once you put the connectors on it, it doesn't just automatically start filling. What happens, it pulls a vacuum. What that does, it tells us there's gonna be any leaks anywhere. So 
you don't have to you don't have to test it by finding the yeah, leak on the floor. Well, years ago, we said, how do we find a leak? What happens? We crank it up and it pours on the floor. Now this thing pulls a vacuum, and when it pulls a vacuum and it knows it's good, then it auto fills. The neat thing about the vacuum, when it releases the vacuum, it pulls it in. There's no chance that we're going to leave an air air pocket in there or anything like that. It just fills it. It fills exactly what you need, and it cuts off, and you're done. Very cool. Every chassis that comes down line two comes through one of these two stations. When it comes in, they pull it in, and it, they receive an alignment. Um, this is that, the system is actually called Truck Cam. It's specifically designed for heavy-duty vehicles. It's not a car system that's been adapted. This is designed specifically for a heavy-duty chassis. It comes in, it gets an alignment, it aligns the front axle to the rear axle, and also, it goes if it has a tag axle, it has a third axle, it aligns all of them. all three, wow. Yes. So we've moved buildings and we're in the roll test building now. What happens here? That's right. Yeah, the chassis leaves, uh, leaves the plant. It, it comes around, it gets parked in the staging lanes outside. And once it's staged, they bring it in as they need them. It, it comes in the door, uh, they, they recheck the fluids. And even then, though that, even you though know the, it's 100% right. 100% right. You do a double check. Check it one more time. Once it gets done there, they pull it up. And what he's done is a chance he just pulled up onto the, uh, the ABS rollers. And it's up on the ABS rollers. It's a wireless connection. And the purpose of the ABS roller is check the brakes. Okay. Cut and dry, that's all it is. Uh, to make sure the ABS is gonna work and the brakes are gonna activate properly. Uh, not only you check the front, they check the rear and the tag also. All right, so it goes through here and then it's going to go, what's in the next station? The next station, it moves up, it moves over the pit. Uh, even though we've torqued everything down in the plant using all the smart tools that we have down here, right. we check them one more time because once the chassis is rolled over, we set the weight down on it. It causes it can cause the suspension to relax, and once it relaxes, just check it one more time. All right, so we're here at Dino. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen here is they they pull the chassis in, they they chained it down on the dyno, and they they've connected it. And what they do now is uh, they run it through a series of tests. So it's yeah. basically like a road test, but it's in a stationary position. That's right, just... it's stationary. If it's going to come loose, it will come loose here because it's not just sitting there spinning, what it is actually under a load. So like I said, if we're gonna check horsepower, we have to check it that way. Okay. Check a mission control, they check for driveline drag, and if it passes all that, then what can happen is we, we can release it. Okay, so at this point, you don't have to do a road test, this is actually this the is road it. test. We're done. Very cool. This is the last step.